Thanks very much, Arno, and thanks to all of you for coming here early Sunday morning. It's great mm -hmm. to see such a large group of you here. I'm really pleased to be here. In fact, I was here about um, six years ago, exactly, 2008, and um, gave a talk on, on a, had a chance to give a paper on, on the health clubs, which you've heard quite a lot about this morning. So I'm not going to really go back on that. What I really would like to talk about, though, is just um, kind of what, what's happened really in the last six years since then, because it was at that stage, it was still very much at an NGO kind of level. We were doing, we were really thrilled by what was happening, what we were seeing in Zimbabwe and, and, and with other partners, with other NGOs that we were partnering with in different, in different parts of Africa. But it was kind of an NGO kind of stuff. And as you heard from, from Honours, um, when he gave the presentation from um, Dr. Fidel Ngabo, who's the director of, um, of health, of um, maternal and child health in, in Rwanda, suddenly it's got to another stage. And this is what we're really so excited about, because it's, it's come out of the kind of the realm of NGO project stuff, and it's got into kind of the national thing. And we've been working as Africa Ahead, working closely with the Ministry of Health in Rwanda for, for some years, in fact, since about 2008, 2009. And, um, and it's been really exciting. And it's basically, this sort of, um, I'm trying to sort of tease out what's, what's actually happened in these last six years. And I think it's, it's um, there's, there's three sort of themes, um, I think, that I, I believe has, has made it go from sort of NGO to where it is now. Um, so there's obviously the whole issue of, of scalability. It's gone from kind of NGO to scale and, and, and a country like Rwanda, where it's, it's been taken, as you heard earlier, right across the country. There's also the whole issue of integration, how, how, how this integration has worked, and you've heard quite a lot about that from Judith now and moving into the fan club. So I think there's that, that whole aspect that, that's a strong selling point. I think governments, presidents like the idea of an integrated program getting a really good bang for your buck. Certainly the Ministry of Finance really likes that. And I think, and in fact, the Ministry of Finance is able then to put a lot of pressure on the Ministry of Health to stop en only talking about curative stuff and, and to move on to preventative health. And the third thing is, um, about quality control. How do you have a, a nice little model, um, but how do you keep the franchise going as it were? Sort of McDonald's, you know, you're gonna get a good quality hamburger wherever you go. But I mean, how do you make sure the, hand, the, the, sort of the health club can keep up the sort of the standards? And I want to talk about that a little bit. But um, also just to sort of say how, in terms of going to scale, um, and uh, what's happening in, in Rwanda right now with Ngabo who couldn't come here, Dr. Ngabo, um, just yesterday, and that's why I'm slightly talking of peace and not going to be uh, uh, showing my presentation right now because I'm not very good at multitasking and having the locked into the slides will just, <laughs> just spoil things for me a bit. So I hope you'll bear with me just to um, tell you a little bit about what's happening in Rwanda. You've seen quite a lot of slides anyway, so that sort of, you know, hopefully explains a lot of it already. It's got it in the mind, you've got the sort of sense of the pictures, what's been happening. But um, just yesterday we got a, an email from the head of environmental health um, who we've been kind of connected with for the last few years. And the news from him was that environmental health, the environmental health desk, it was a desk in the Ministry of Health, is going up to directorship level. And so for us, that's a really quantum le leap. It's kind of like, wow, environmental health is now being taken really seriously in Rwanda, where it should be. I mean, it's environmental health that saves the millions. It's not the curative hospitals that are sort of curing people that shouldn't have got sick in the first place and spending all the millions of dollars there. It's really stop people getting sick in the first place. And we know from those graphs that we're seeing and WHO and UNICEF sort of show us 87% of the disease burden <laughs> across Africa can be prevented. So that's what we should be doing, you know, saving the millions and, 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 and also saving the money. So anyway, those three themes, reaching scale and how to achieve integration and quality control is what I'm sort of arguing about can be achieved with this health club model. It's a recipe. It's just a very simple recipe that can be repeated, but as long as you kind of repeat it properly, and there's some key ingredients that I think julie has been talking about. But so maybe just a quick example of, of, of what, of, um, what we're excited about in Rwanda, because it's, it's, it's there, little Rwanda, 20 years exactly since the genocide, everybody was uh, you know, totally along by it. And this country has just suddenly surged. It's the bright star in Africa now in terms of development. More women, MPs, and I think even in, in this part of the world, you know, it's, just, it's really strong. Not to just MPs, but you know, Minister of Finance, Minister of Health, they are all women. And they really are changing things there dramatically. And so there's really good leadership there, and it's attracting the locals. So, just a few weeks ago, I, was, I had to go back to, to Rwanda because we had a delegation of um, senior doctors, directors of health from the three eastern provinces, northern, North Kivu, South Kivu, and Maniema, the whole eastern sort of swathe of, of DRC. And they'd heard about this project going on. In fact, Rusizi, which you, you saw slides of earlier, Rusizi district in the extreme south 
west of the country that borders Burundi and DRC, just across the river from um, Bukavu. And uh, so all this, this delegation, about 18 people came across from DRC to, to find out about this CHC model. Is it, you know, does, does it really work? Because they've got a great model that they're very proud of in, Co in Congo, in DRC, um, called the Village Asani Project, the Village School and um, Health Program, Healthy, healthy Villages. And, uh, so, and they're quite strong on that, and it's well in, in, embedded in, into their program. So quite understandably, kind of, you know, they, they've, they've got a good program. What's this about CHCs? Is there any added value we can bring to our own program in DRC from what they, they might see in, um, in our program in Rwanda? And so th th this large delegation came across, and we were hosting them together, as a Africa here, together with the Ministry of Health, to see how, you know, to show them around. And I'm sure a lot of you who've gone come on these sort of tours, evaluations or annual reviews for big programs and stuff, you'll have had this experience where you're kind of being led by the nose and being shown to the villages and shown, shown everything that sort of, um, that they want you to see. And the kind of the frustration one has of that when you're just being, the whole thing's out of being rigged and you're being taken to the villages that are expecting you, that they've had lots of time to prepare. And um, I personally had this rather horrible experience a couple of, uh, uh, some months ago where, you know, we were told a whole area, this is not Rwanda, this is another country altogether. I won't mention names, but it was quite a wake up call for me because we just have been complaining, why aren't we seeing, yeah, your report is saying all of these villages are ODF, can't, can't we just duck off the road anywhere and have a look at some of these villages? And they, you know, because we haven't seen much evidence yet. And so, sort of, they said, okay, we'll take you to one tomorrow, tomorrow morning. We'll kick, collect you from the airport, uh, from the hotel, and get you to one of these villages. And honestly, they collected us quite a couple of hours late from the hotel. Then we drove for a good t couple of hours. So it was a good four or five hours before we actually got to the village. So it was late morning by the time we got there and got out, and nice little village, and everything looking great, went to the one home, lovely toilet, all nicely swept, nice little bowl of ash, nice lid on the top, went to the next one, same sort of story. So Eleven of them, in fact, just went on to all of them. And I've got this rather nasty little habit that Peter Morgan um, showed me some time ago, of you just move the lid and you take a, have your camera ready and you take a quick click, and you see if there's, you know, if, if, it's, if it's fly production, you know, if there's flies come swarming out, then you know you've got a fly factory. So, and that's what you don't want, obviously. So anyway, took this, no flies, no smell. Well, this is quite impressive. Had a look inside. It was about that deep, and it had never been used. This is this ODF village. They don't shit there. You know, they just completely empty. <laughs> Went on to the next one. They were all exactly the same. They'd all, they were dummy latrines. They'd been built in the few hours that it took us to get there. And so this was a major program in a significant country using a lot of donor funds, and this is what we saw. A complete cover-up. And so anyway... So <laughs> I've had, I had the feeling this crowd from DRC, doctors, senior, running whole programs, weren't that going to be that interested in a pre-rigged pre thing. So we gave them the list of the, of the villages, the 50 villages. Here we are. This is the date they were started. This is how many, um, you know, how many members we've got in this club. Here's the list. You go and choose. And it was taking a risk, but we sort of felt pretty confident about our program. But you choose, and you go off. And they divided into three teams, and we all went off. And I, you know, really sort of, you know, we were pretty concerned about this. We didn't know what the hell we were going to see, and it's, the program had only been going two or three months by that stage. Anyway, off, off we went and drove the village that I, the, the vehicle I was with, with one of these um, directors of health uh, from Maniema um, province, uh, went along, and we drove for a good two and a half hours to the village that he'd selected, off dirt tracks, winding along, and then we sort of stopped. There was a few people around. We thought, well, this, you know, this, I wonder if this is the village. Let's stop and asked somebody around. So we got out of the car and saw a little old lady sort of peeping out from her, her hut, her little mud hut, and um, they, they asked her, they all speak the same language there, it's just across the border, and they asked her, um, you know, is this the village that you know, we're looking for? And she sort of nodded rather nervously. And then the guy said, well, are you, do you know anything about health clubs? So she sort of again nodded, not wondering what on earth was going on. <coughs> and then, well, do you have a membership card? And then she sort of ducked back into her into her ca uh, little hut and came back with a green card wrapped up in plastic and you know showed it to us and we looked at it and half the half the topics had already been signed off and she was sort of getting quite pleased about things and then she she took us into the into her home and we wandered around and i mean it was just stunning you know everything we've just been hearing about you know it was beautifully swept there was a garbage pit there there was a hand washing tap there with soap and water she hadn't had time to rig it and put it up the toilet was there the cover was on it was a thing that you use your foot so it's a kind of a, a hands-free way of 
change of a coat. You always know there's a point of contact that's just asking for trouble to have that sort of nice sort of foot thing. And it was just there. It was perfect. She had a fuel-efficient stove. We were totally amazed. And she was old. I mean, she was in about the age of my mum. She was about 90, 91. You know, she was <laughs> kind of like, wow, how did you manage all this? And she said, well, it wasn't just me. I'm not part of the club. They all helped me. They came. They fixed me. They made this stove for me. So anyway, I was actually delighted, obviously. And the, and the team I was with were, were um, duly impressed. And they, they were quite convinced. And we went on like this. And it was really great. They had this, this randomized idea of looking at and finding out things. So we got back, and we had the three days of workshop, and they were all well and truly primed. They thought, yes, we can, in, we can introduce this. So anyway, this is kind of going to scale, you know. And I've just um, – so how did we start in the first place? And I think in Rwanda, um, I was with the, um, a, an advisor with WSP, with the, with the ministry, um, to the Ministry of Health and Sanitation at the time, and I had that uh, introduced to the Minister of Health um, by the head, of the, the head of the Environmental Health Desk, now the Directorate. Anyway, the desk officer introduced me to his minister, Minister Richard Sezibera, and um, who actually is now the, um, he's the Secretary General for the whole of the East African community based in Arusha. So he's, he's gone to dizzy heights. But anyway, this is, <coughs> this is the kind of minister that you want in every country. He was just sort of, he asked me, to sort of tell him a little bit about the health clubs and how they worked, and I did my best, and I sort of said, okay, well, you know, could we try them? I think we, it might work in Rwanda. Could we try them in a couple of places on a pilot basis? And he went, Anthony, we don't have time to pilot in this country. You've been piloting for years. Now, go, just, just get, give me a roadmap. So anyway, this is the roadmap, and we did it, and he, he signed the forward, and you can, you can see it, but it was really just such a, a great start, and we did this, and we did it in Kenya, Rwanda, and um, just, just sort of what we thought, how it would work, the whole pro principle, how they were. Anyway, so he went off and he talked to his cabinet colleagues and they, we had it printed out in Kenya, Rwanda. And anyway, just a, just a few weeks later, the president called all 30 mayors from the whole country and dished out this roadmap to all of them and said, I want a health club in every village like yesterday. You know? So it was suddenly we'd gone from sort of NGO project work to a whole national program in a country like Rwanda. <coughs> And now we're seeing it sort of spinning off across into, into DRC. Burundi is interested. Tanzania, we're already talking about it. Uh, we'll hear a bit about Uganda. So it's kind of like from one little place, it's, it's beginning to spread. So that's the exciting side for us, sort of going to scale, you know, this whole idea that we can, we can reach scale. And um, I think the, the other thing was, you know, this is just going back to what, what was it about that, that, that appealed to Dr. Richard Cesabera, the Ministry of Health? What, and I think it's a lot what, what Anna was talking about earlier. And I think you know, it was kind of like seeing the, um, you know, that, 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 that round um, pie graph that we were looking at. If you just think of that as a kind of like a target you know, for darts, and it's sort of like instead of, sort of one dart going for that little diarrhea little segment the whole time, it's like getting a whole fist of darts and whoa, you know, hitting the whole lot. It's just kind of this idea of an integrated approach. You're hitting all those things. From a Minister of Health's point of view, to hit that whole target, is, is what they're looking for, you know. So it, it's really exciting to them. And, and when he starts talking about that to his, his, um, his Minister of Finance and to the President, everybody, they say, well, for goodness sake, if this thing works, let's, let's just do it. So I think it was that sort of idea that it's, it's practical, it's low cost, it's using their own existing staff, the extension staff and the, the people in the villages, so it's not waiting for a donor to come and dish out any money. This roadmap doesn't talk about money. So first thing, everybody's saying, but where's the budget? You know, how many millions do you need for this? There was no budget, deliberately no budget. It was just, what can we do ourselves to get things moving? So I think that was the kind of the, the, the whole integrated side of it. Um, and you saw a lot of that already. And the final thing is the aspect of, of quality control. And I think Julie also mentioned about the Gates Foundation coming in. Because again, this was a kind of a seeing as believing moment with, with the, Gates, the Gates guys. We talked to them at a conference like this. And they said, well, come see what's happening in, Uganda, in Rwanda. And they sort of said, yes, OK, let's have a look. And they've got carried out, you know, they're now funding a lot of money to do a randomized control trial, massive thing. Um, and they, that's running right now. And so, in a way, and they gave, funded us to be able to do the quality control that we need, that kind of make a, a, it's a classic CHC. So we could bring in all the things, you know, the four Ts, the trainers, the training, the, 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 the training materials, quality training materials, piece of paper, but training materials and transport, you know motorcycles or bicycles so that the guys can cover the villages out there. 
And for environmental health staff to have motorcycles and be given this kind of stuff, you know, it, it's great. So it's, it's just making sure that they, the recipe was done in the proper way that we had had experience of. I mean, they started 20 years ago in Zim, so this is sort of you know, a lot of refinement and, you know, getting, seeing what, what, distilling out what, what are the key ingredients. And that's, that's what's happening in that Rassisi program that you heard about earlier with those results. And I think that was really, really a thing. So I think time to flick through these things. Just uh, very fast, okay. if you like. Yeah. Okay, so it's the five million. That's the target we're talking about. Oh. Just a... Uh, all of the uh, PowerPoints are, are going to be available on the net. Um, yeah. We'll have them all uploaded the for you. Track we went along. That's a little old lady who we could have we stumbled when we stopped and asked her if she if this was the right village. And there she is finding her card with her card and so on. Anyway, I will. I will if you need this uh, presentation, I think it's on the Africa Ahead website. Uh, so I just must do your, my train. Yeah. I just, one thing I want to, must show you. <laughs> mm. That's integrated development, I think. $5. Less than $5. And we're part of an energy thing. Just bolt on your energy component as well. Anyway, thanks very much. Okay. Just one very, very short question. I, I'm, I know I, I cut... Um, the gentleman off last time. If, if you have a, a question now, you're more than welcome. Um, or if you want to ask that uh, question from, from before, you can do that. Otherwise, we will, um, it's up to you. Uh, you'd have to come to the podium for that. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm Godwin Chinemirim from Nigeria. OK, on the six months um, training course, the, the, the course you do for um, the health club members. I would like to know what's your vision? Do you hope to train the entire members of the community or you hope to get some people trained that will in turn train others? I also want to quickly t um, um, say about our program in Nigeria. Um, we have a, a voluntary um, <coughs> wash club and what we do is we get students around that are willing to volunteer. They, they are trained on issues surrounding water, sanitation, and hygiene. They now go into primary schools to establish wash clubs. They also go to communities and enlighten them on wash issues. And last week, we, we picked about three of them, and we trained them on hand, um, borehole drilling in Kaduna, National Water Resource Institute, Kaduna. So I want to say we would like to um, bring in this, your concept of Explaining to the community, training them, giving them certificates. I want to say that that strategy is a very good one because in Africa, people value certificates. <laughs> By the time you give someone a certificate and say, oh, you've been trained in this area, that's what we're excited. Like what you showed there, you saw people excited about that. So we are interested in bringing this into communities in Nigeria. We hope to partner with you on that. Thank you very much. Maybe, yeah, again, that's not really clear. We sort of take it for granted. What we do is, okay, look at Rwanda, right? I, I developed a training manual for Rwanda, not this one, but we've got a Rwandan one. Um, I then trained core trainers, um, 25 core trainers for Rwanda. I did the training myself at that stage because we didn't have such a team then. So I trained the trainers. Those trainers are working with Ministry of Health. Those trainers do other training in districts. They go out and they train all the environmental health staff in each district. So you've got 30 districts. You work your way through around the country doing the training in each district with your core trainers. Then when you've got your district trained, you've got uh, core trainers in each district. Those district trainers who are still Ministry of Health, right? You're not paying them anything extra. That's their job. Then they train from the community. So now say one environmental health technician has got uh, five villages under him, right? He's going to train one person from each of those villages, just community members. They've got to be fairly literate. They've got to have a good recommendation from, from be, be uh, you know, kind of volunteered by the community for this service. It's a voluntary service. They get trained, and all they get for it actually is usually just a, a T-shirt. Um, if the project allows, maybe a bicycle as a sort of form of recompense for the, for the um, training. And then they train their own community. So it's not you coming in from outside training it with your project officers. It's the community training themselves, and that's why it's sustainable. The trainer remains in the community. They, they remain with their toolkit. They know what they're doing. They can, can carry on and do reruns of the same training ad infinitum. That's how you get to a country, just one by one like that. <laughs>